This case study we'd be looking at today is on Robert Latimer and his daughter, Tracy Latimer. This is a case which is definitely difficult to listen to and be aware, as it definitely explores and challenges quite a few different morality and ethics when it comes to life and the possible euthanasia. So let's get started. In this case study, Tracy Latimer, a 12-year-old, was diagnosed with severe debilitating disease, which was called cerebral palsy. And she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at birth. Despite numerous orthopedic and soft tissue surgeries, it left Tracy in a state of constant pain. She noted that Tracy was one of four children in the Latimer family household, and Tracy was cared for primarily by her family as she was not able to attend school and was receiving respite care because of her debilitating disease. After another surgery was offered, there was no guarantee of there being any relief for Tracy. So her father made the difficult choice, and the choice was to end his own daughter's life. Before the surgery, Robert placed Tracy in his truck that was turned on. He then connected one end of the hose of the exhaust of his truck to the other end into the truck, which would kill Tracy. Carbon monoxide inhalation was reported to sometimes cause food-like symptoms, which can include dizziness, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, weakness, headache, a trouble breathing, heart fluttering, or increased blood pressure before someone dies. These are all the symptoms of carbon monoxide. A person may also fall unconscious before experiencing any of these symptoms as well. Robert Latimer stated that his reason for this method to end his daughter's life was that he felt it was the most humane way because she will never have the quality of life that she deserved because of her debilitating disease. Once Tracy had died, Robert put her into her bed and waited for his family to come home. Laura, who was Tracy's mother, found Tracy dead in her bed and told her husband to immediately call the authorities by which point Robert had already destroyed any of the evidence, as he had an example cut up the hose and burned it. This allowed him to state that Tracy must have died in her sleep. In the following days, Laura claimed that she knew nothing of Robert's plan to end Tracy's life. The authorities suspected that there might have been possible foul play because of her debilitating disease and sought to have an autopsy that confirmed that she, being Tracy, died of natural causes for her death. However, the appeal for an autopsy led Robert to request for his daughter's body to be, to be cremated, hence it would destroy most forms of evidence being that she died of carbon monoxide poisoning. However, 10 days later, Robert did confess that he killed Tracy. From his confession, Robert was then charged with first-degree murder, but was found guilty of second-degree murder by a jury, and was sentenced to a minimum of 10 years in prison for, her, for his daughter's death. Now that we have covered the background case, we're going to really explore the morality issues around it. Focusing on topics such as non malefinities benefits, autonomy, and justice. And how the medical field has a Hippocratic Oath, which is do no harm. Now malefinence, non malefinence means to not inflict harm on another individual, whereas malefinence is the doing of harm or evil to an individual. 
With that in mind, was there a conflict in this case? Do you believe that Maleficent was in this case? Was it justifiable for Robert Latimer to overrule the principle of Maleficent for his daughter's case? You may want to pause recording to think to yourself about that. When you think of malfinance, there are two possibilities. One is that if one's pain and suffering is so severe, then taking no action is malfinancent. Second, if killing one is the ultimate harm, then therefore anything is better than death because you value life above all else. These are two contradictory points of view, but are still our perspectives on the Latimer case. When you think about malfiance, questions you ask yourself are first, how could the family recover from Tracy's death? Can an actual murder be non-malfiant or not? And the choice and course of action the Latimer took, carbon monoxide poisoning, meant that she did fall asleep. She may not have experienced any possible distress prior to her death, such as tachyactria. We'll never know for sure, as her um, cognitive and mental ability was severely limited despite her age. When thinking also in this case from a benefit point of view, there is another conflict, and that is, was Robert Vladimir following the principle of benefiance? Benefiance is murder considered to be the greatest harm of all. What was Robert Vladimir's motive for ending Tracy's life? Was he overburdened as being the caregiver for his daughter, who will never have a, a quality of life that would be the same as a regular child? Or was this an act of mercy from a loving parent who was heartbroken to see how much pain and suffering that his daughter was experiencing because of her mental condition? When benefiance, is there a state when someone's pain is so severe that death is more favorable than the alternative? Is there a right or wrong action? When you think about the autonomy, while autonomy is often thought of self-government or freedom to act function independently, was Tracy Latimer's autonomy taken into consideration by Latimer? Or, from an autonomy point of view, how about euthanasia? The voluntarily, non-voluntary, or involuntary mercy killing of someone who is terminally ill. While someone is mentally disabled, at what point in a civilized society do we make the decision for a mentally handicapped individual that their life, based upon how we perceive it, is not worth living? Euthanasia is legal in Canada in certain circumstances. I'm